Hey, this is Carlos Caballo. Welcome back. We're going to talk today about five soulmate signs. Well, with a few soulmate quotes thrown in to make it a little bit interesting. If you want to find out if somebody is a romantic or not, the, about the best and easiest way is to ask them one simple question. Do you believe in soulmates? Now, the practical, no-nonsense friends out there are going to tell you that there's no such thing as soulmates. You should put your feet back on the ground. You know, be grounded, be real. And they'll come up with a dozen depressing stories that really don't have much to do with the topic of soulmates, just their own poor relationship skills. The more creative and emotionally connected friends will tell you, of course there are soulmates. And they'll come up with dreamy and far-fetched stories of love that escaped them. They usually finish up with a wistful look in their eye that makes you think that finding a soulmate must be a painful ordeal and not a joyous and magical destiny. Consider a few of these, uh, these soulmate quotes. Soulmate is an overused term, but a true soul connection is very re rare and very real. That one's by Hilary Duff. Hilary is hinting at the fact that there is a rare kind of magic when we find somebody that we work well with, and that that's something that most people can agree upon, I think. And then there's this. What's the difference between the love of your life and your soulmate? One is a choice and one is not. That one's by Taryn Fisher. Attraction, as some people have said, is not a choice. So in that way, a strong chemistry between you and your man is something that cannot be denied or even avoided for that matter. What we hope to find is the love of our life that is our soulmate. And don't forget one of my most favorite dysfunctional soulmate quotes he felt now that he was not simply closer to her, but that he did not know where he ended and she began. That's a fairly famous quote from Leo Tolstoy. Leo proved that you can take a good thing and go way too far with it. Look, it may sound really romantic to lose yourself in another person, but you rapidly discover that this is, well, let's say it's more of a mental and emotional disorder. Losing your identity is a definition of mental illness, not true love. But here's a good one that balances the perspective on soulmates. To say that one waits a lifetime for a soulmate to come around is a paradox. People eventually get sick of waiting to take a chance on someone, and by the act of commitment, become soulmates, which takes a lifetime to perfect. That one's by Chris Jami, which is one of the most real-world definitions of soulmate that I've ever heard, especially if you're one of those people that find yourself waiting more than taking action to cross paths with them. So what is the truth? Is there such thing as soulmates, or is it just a myth? Is there somebody you were meant to be with waiting for you? Are they out there for you, waiting somewhere? Well, the truth is both a little, uh, it's a little of both the practical and the romantic side. Yes, there are soulmates, and there is a part of finding that person and possibly making that person that you need to recognize. You can't fall victim to the soulmate fairy tales that you've been told, but at the same time, you can't give up hope that there isn't a guy out there who fits you just right. And it makes all the effort to find him worthwhile. It's when a bit of healthy expectations meets positive attitude and combines with a little intelligent action. That's all it takes. Hey, no one ever said your soulmate would just appear out of thin air. You have to do some of the legwork. Now, there are people you encounter who you feel like you share a real connection with, almost like it... Uh, it goes back in time to maybe past lives. It might even connect you to a common destiny, a shared path you and he were meant to walk. Let me start up front by cautioning you not to look for soulmate signals as the only way to find a person to be with. We often rely too heavily on mystical methods of finding the one we love, and we might overlook the very real possibilities right in front of us. At heart, I'm a romantic. I believe that there are people we're meant to be with, and some that we absolutely should not be with. And when we find one of the good ones, it's kind of like kind of like two Lego blocks snapping together. If that's a reasonable definition of soulmates, then, well, yes, I'm a believer. So how do you find this person? How do you find this soulmate of yours? Are there soulmate signals you can use to pick them out of the masses of would-be boyfriends, losers, and those other jerks you wish you could have avoided? Well, as it turns out, yes. There are soulmate signs to tell you when you've met someone who could be a true soulmate for you. And these aren't magical or mystical signs. They're very real and down to earth. First, let me warn you about a couple of ways you might think you can see a soulmate sign in him and how these might actually fool you. Okay, I call them bad soulmate signals. Bad soulmate signal number one is his number. Sorry, but in a world where you can change your name, 
or the way you even add up the numbers to, to come up with a number for somebody's uh, name, knowing whether or not his number matches yours or not, or comparing numbers about you, is not a good way to figure out if you found a life partner. I see a lot of people doing this, trying to divine, if you will, from the way the numbers add up, whether or not they're meant to be together. There are a lot of ways to determine compatibility, and if he's a good match for you. Things like his maturity stage, for example, his focus, his personality type. And I'll cover those in future articles and videos, but I always advise to stick to the nitty gritty and the real methods to figure out compatibility. And the, yes, this goes for most of those online love tests too, okay? Which leads me to the, the next bad signal. Bad soulmate signal, your psychic says, look, I realize there are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in my dating philosophy. If they could, well, these psychics anyways, if they could tell your future, they would have been working a little harder on stock picks and lottery numbers than on your love life, right? <laughs> I'm just saying, let's be honest about it here. So let's not use too many mystical and supernatural methods to tell us the things that we can figure out all by ourselves. Most of the time, using these magical mystical methods, it's kind of like the Beatles there, magical mystery tour, these magical mystery methods uh, it's more about wanting somebody just to tell us what we should do in a very uncertain world. We're looking for guidance. Now let's get down to the real soulmate signals that do work. The first sign you've met your soulmate, everything is just so easy. Look, relationships will always be a challenge, but sometimes you meet someone that just seems to get you on all the right levels. It's not the usual struggle that you experience to make things work out. It feels like you've known each other for your whole lives. You don't feel like you're fighting against circumstance. Uh, you don't feel like they're resisting you. Doesn't that feel great for a change anyway? You don't feel like the odds are stacked against you. Of course, there are other factors to watch out for, but if you find it easy to be with him and you don't get all the usual resistance and reluctance, you found someone that you can mesh with. The soulmate part is something you may have to create by just continuing to work at it. And at the very least, you found a, a guy who's available emotionally. And that's actually a big deal these days, so don't underrate that one. The second sign of soulmates is that you bring out the best in each other. There are some couples out there that are just like fire and gasoline when they get together, aren't they? You know, sometimes they're like a Michael Bay action movie full of over-the-top explosions. But when you're with someone that could be your soulmate, you'll find that each of you knows how to lift the other one up, instead of getting caught up in ugly confrontational shouting matches. He helps you to be a better person, and you help him to aspire to be the man you've always dreamed about. In that way, sometimes your soulmate evolves from the man you had no idea would be the one. Now, the third signal of meeting your soulmate is that you support each other. This is another huge one. In the same way that you bring out the best in each other, you have to take an active role in lifting the other person up. We've all had a relationship where our partner was jealous or they were uh, threatened by our direction in life probably fearful of being left behind, right? He blocked your success at every turn and pretended that you were crazy to think otherwise. In a fully functional relationship, especially one where you found your soulmate, you'll notice that there's none of that, that low self-esteem nonsense going on inside there. He just wants you to succeed and you want the same for him. Maybe you find yourself sending him article links online or you're cutting out interesting things you find in papers and magazines for him and whatever his career is or whatever it is. But one thing is for certain, you get a joy out of helping him move forward in life because you'll, you'll know that he wants you there right beside him the whole way. By lifting him up, you lift the both of you up. Now the fourth signal of finding someone that could be your soulmate is that you feel secure in your relationship. This is a big one for most women. Having a sense of stability and relaxation in your relationship is probably the ultimate goal for most of the people I've coached and talked to. And this could be a, com a contributing factor in why this relationship succeeds over that one. After all, if you're feeling insecure, you're more likely to have a freak out from time to time that's going to scare your partner off, right? If he grows distant after an argument and you're not prepared for it, you'll get even more freaked out. And then the cycle continues until he's pushed away and gone for good. But if you can find your way back to a sense of calm safety about your connection, you'll be much less likely to self-sabotage and self-destruct, and your relationship will be as solid as a rock. Now, the fifth sign of your soulmates is that they know how to manage your moods. This guy knows you and understands your emotional cycles. When you're with a guy who's your soulmate, you know he'll be patient with your emotions, no matter how wild the ride might get. Of course, this is just as much a function of his maturity as his, his maturity as yours, 
but you need to know that he won't lose his cool when you're having a, a moment. Usually this is not the kind of guy who complains about drama from women all the time. I've noticed this quite a bit. He's also not the kind of guy who constantly has to point out the differences between men and women. These are guys you need to watch out for. He just seems to understand how women work, and he flows with it. And that makes everything flow so much easier between you two. Now, as you can tell, the signals that tell you you found your soulmate can be subtle. It's not as if you can have him pull out a number two pencil and go through a test. But if your radar has been fine-tuned enough, and by, of course, listening to the stuff I tell you, it will be, you'll be able to recognize his soulmate signs in advance. And then, all on your own, you'll know whether or not you should stick around and work through it with him. Your soulmate won't fall from the sky into your lap, and you, you also can't wish him into being. But if you put yourself out there, in the path of many different men, you'll make it almost inevitable that you'll find the man that can be, at the very least, the love of your life. Give him a chance to be the man of your dreams. And if you'd like to know if the guy you're with right now, or maybe the guy that you're prospectively dating, if you want to know if he's the right one for you, you need to know how to read his signals. He's sending you all the signs you need to see right now, whether he's your soulmate or not. And all you got to do is pick up on them and know what they are. Go on over to datingadviceguru.com forward slash read his signals. That's datingadviceguru.com forward slash read his signals. Go on over there. You'll get all the information on how to figure out what kind of a guy he is. What's he looking for? Is he really in love with you? Is he really looking for the same kind of relationship and commitment as you? Go on over to datingadviceguru.com forward slash read his signals. And this is Carlos Cavallo. I'll be talking to you again very soon.